All right, so arthropods in um, parasitology. We know that arthropods uh, account for a very large share of the global diversity. There's tons and tons and tons of different um, arthropods. They have, you know, they're in relative abundance. There's over 1 million species of in insects uh, that exist in over 50,000 species of arachnids. So we're going to take a look today and kind of categorize these uh, various arthropods in terms of their um, body, their makeup, their shapes, how many legs, so forth, and uh, you know, you should have a very basic grasp of these when we're done and again what their roles are in parasitology, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, being arthropod vectors and trans carriers of um, paras parasitic organisms. Um, these are very adaptable organisms and they are capable of forming large populations due to their rapid and fertile reproduction rates. So we're talking things like insects and so forth that can um, multiply uh, very easily. So the populations can definitely uh, increase very quickly. And so we define arthropods as small animals with jointed limbs, okay, or, or legs. Uh, they typically exhibit some type of segmentation in their bodies. Uh, they have various degrees of cephalization, so their heads uh, can be arranged differently. Um, most of them, most insects are going to possess some type of a hard, rigid exoskeleton. Um, it's mo made up mostly of protein and chitin. Okay, so this ex exoskeleton is kind of like a protective uh, outer shell covering. Okay, it's usually hard, covered with wax. Okay, so this is things you've seen before, okay, on different insects. And this also includes like some crustaceans and so forth that also have this hard uh, exoskeleton. And so arthropods can be categorized into three of the following. These are what I want you to know, write these down. These categories include crustaceans, arachnids, and insects, okay? Most parasitic uh, arthropods belong in the two main classes of insects and arachnids. So we're talking about either our six-legged insects or the eight-legged arachnids, okay? And this is a general characterization of what an arachnid would look like, okay? We can see our eight limbs, four on each side. This sort of um, insect illustration here um, where we've got our six legs we've got these different segments in the body again it just depends on the type of insect whether it's a fly whether it's a mosquito uh, there may be some variations again in the head region okay that's the cephalization that we mentioned earlier but in terms of general um arrangement or morphology you should be able to readily uh, distinguish between the two main class of um arthropods that are involved in the transmission of parasitic organisms. Uh, three distinct body parts for this insect. So this is our insect right here. This is a typical fly that we see. This is a typical morphology of a fly. So three distinct body parts that I do want you to be familiar with. If you had to describe and distinguish between an insect and an arachnid, these three structures, we have that head region, okay, the thorax, all right, that, and then that abdominal region, okay? The thorax is where we're gonna find sort of that middle area where we have our uh, six legs. We're gonna have three bilateral pairs of legs, okay? And two um, pairs of wings attached to this middle area, okay? Our thorax, okay? And then the abdominal region. In terms of um, parasitic insects, these are going to actively feed on host tissues and fluids at some stage in their life cycle, okay? And this is typically how the parasitic organism that they may be harboring would be transmitted, okay? As these fleas and flies and ticks, uh, lice, feed on host tissue, okay? So they're taking a blood meal from whatever the host is, it could be a human, it could be an animal, and that's when we will have the transmission of a parasitic organism, all right? And so we'll take, we've taken a look at a few uh, parasitic diseases so far this semester that um, are transmitted by way of an um, insect. The first one that comes to mind is malaria, which is transmitted by a mosquito. All right, so we have um, insects such as fleas, flies, and lice. These are all um, insect uh, parasitic uh, 
uh, uh, reservoirs. Um, the arachnid, the arachnid is a little bit different. It's, instead of having those three um, body parts, there's going to be two, and then we have our four um, bilateral pairs of legs. Okay, we don't see any um, wings or antennae on the arachnids. Okay, um, we kind of have that head and middle region together. So we have a cephalothorax and then we have that abdominal region. Okay, so structure wise, you should be able to look at any, you know, image that I would give you or show you and distinguish between uh, the, the two main classes of the insect or the arachnid. Oh, I went wrong. Okay, same, same mode of action here. These arachnids are going to basically transmit um, parasitic organisms by way of biting into or feeding off of host tissues, okay? So in this image here, we have a tick, okay? Ticks can definitely transmit um, diseases through the bite, okay? Mites are also examples of um, arachnids that can uh, feed on a host tissue, And so we talked a little bit about life cycle. Um, so I think it's, it's kind of fitting that we take a moment to kind of look at the um, life cycle of some of these in insects that can be involved in the transmission of parasitic diseases. So there's various stages. So we have the egg stage, the larvae, pupae, and the adult stage, okay? The egg and larvae stage is basically gonna uh, be characterized by this egg hatching for the um, genesis of this new organism. It's going to be molting where it basically transforms from a larvae into a pupae and then a, a fully hatching process where we have our um, adult insect. Okay, so this organism is going to go through a complete metamorphosis from an egg to a full adult insect. Okay, characterized by our three uh, pairs of legs. We have our various uh, segments in our thorax region. We've got these wings. You may or may not have antennae. Um, when we're talking about parasitic arthropods, we can, um, th they can be characterized as parasites themselves, okay? in the sense of what is a parasite, it's an organism that relies on another organism for survival, okay? So these um, flies and ticks and mites, they have to feed on host tissue in order to get the nutrients and blood that they need in order to survive. So they are parasitic uh, by definition, um, but they can also function as hosts or vectors for other microorganisms, okay? So in the same token, they can harbor um, microorganisms inside of themselves that they can have transmitted uh, or obtained while uh, take or while feeding on host tissue, okay? Uh, we distinguish between uh, the ecto and endoparasites. In this case, most these are gonna be ectoparasites that live on or in the skin of vertebrae, right? So um, like the ticks, those are going to be ones that are going to be found kind of buried in the skin or in the fur of uh, things like uh, dogs, maybe. Um, so they're typically going to be characterized as ectoparasites, and they are blood suckers or tissue feeders, okay? Um, and, and they're basically surviving by biting into the tissue of the host, Okay. And again, that's them, two things are happening. They're getting the things that they need for survival, but they could also potentially be releasing or transmitting um, parasitic organisms that they may be harboring. Okay, so these are some important characteristics. Again, be able to describe or, or understand that these arthropods that we're characterizing, they can either be, they are parasites themselves, but they also function as vectors, okay, for other 
uh, microorganisms, okay? Uh, transmission, all right, so obviously the direct contact is when the um, host, they, these arthropods or insects or arachnids are coming in contact with our host um, by way of uh, the bed, um, clothing, something that's contaminated um, with um, the eggs or pupae of these uh, microorganisms, okay? So we come in direct contact with those uh, components. We can come in direct contact with the adult organisms, okay, that are actively um, feeding or laying eggs, okay? Mosquitoes, they're flying from host to host. Fleas are jumping onto, you know, hosts in passing, okay? Um, eggs, these eggs, we can come in contact with them in any type of shared environment, okay? So the larvae may be present and they can feed on host tissue as well. So there are many ways that these um, parasites can be transmitted and these arthropods can um, be function as parasites themselves, okay? We can come in contact with various components of the organism, again, including the eggs, pupae, or even the larva, or coming in contact with the adult organism that's you know, actively moving, mobile. They're feeding, they're laying eggs, they're jumping around, flying around, okay? So that's including our fleas, mosquitoes, mites, um, yes, the bed bugs, all of those um, are ways that a parasitic diseases can be transmitted by way of the arthropod. So the parasitic stages or the infective stages are going to be, uh, in flies and mosquitoes, that's typically going to be the adult or the larvae stage, okay? Um, in lice, it's going to be those eggs that can cling to various hair and feathers. You've probably heard about head lice at some point in your life if you've never experienced it, okay? But they do attach to or cling to hair and feathers, okay? And they can, you know, those clinging there, they can lay eggs. Um, ticks, these are epidermal parasites. They're going to feed on the blood, okay? So they've got to bite through tissue, okay? And they're typically going to be found, again, in those epiderm epidermal layers of skin. You probably have heard about dogs having ticks, okay? Mites, these are... In the adult form, they're feeding on skin, they're sucking blood, they're sucking lymph, okay? Fleas, okay? The larvae are not parasitic, but they feed on um, debris that's associated with bedding, okay? The adult stages are parasitic and they're feeding on host blood, so they're taking, they're actually biting, okay? So do, do take it, uh, some time and come back and look at these um, various a piercing stages for when they can actually transmit um, or cause an infection. So there are a plethora of human diseases um, that are of arthropod origin. Um, I mentioned the malaria earlier. The mosquito is the arthropod vector in this case. A Nopales mosquito, I'd like for you to be able to identify um, some of the arthropod vectors and their corresponding human disease. Um, Anopheles mosquito is responsible for transmitting uh, the organism that causes malaria. So those plasmodium species that we looked at earlier this semester, they are transmitted by the bite of the Anopheles mosquito. Uh, dengue fever is another one that's caused by the uh, bite or transmitted through the bite of a mosquito, the Aedes aegypti mosquito can cause jaundice and dengue fever, okay? The um, sand fly, okay? This is another insect. I think we looked a little bit at uh, Leishmaniasis uh, earlier. It's caused by uh, parasitic protozoan. And the phlebotomine sand fly is responsible for causing leishmaniasis. 
leishmaniasis is the human disease that is caused by the transmission of the sandfly, the bite of a sandfly. Okay. Lice, okay, dermatitis, right? Hyperpigmentation. You see different changes, pediculus, right? You've heard about um lice infections before. Okay, so lice are another example of an arthropod that can transmit or cause a human disease. So I would like for you to know a few of those. Um, the plague, you've heard about the plague before. The plague is transmitted through, um, organisms transmitted through the bite of a flea, a rickettsia. Ticks um, transmit the organism that causes Lyme disease. Scabies is transmitted through the bite of um, mites, okay? So these are just some examples of human diseases of arthropod parasites. This is not a very um, lengthy conversation right here. I'm gonna actually stop here. I do want you to take some time and come back and just kind of look through these and make sure you have a basic understanding. Again, we don't expect you to be experts um, when you leave this course, but you should have some basic working knowledge of these topics that we're covering, okay? And so the things that I want you to know as it relates to arthropods are, is basically like, you know, what, what are these arthropods? Like, how do we categorize them? You know, we can categorize them as either, you know, the crustaceans, the arachnids, or the insects, but the two main um, classes that we care about in terms of parasitic diseases and human parasitic diseases are the insects and arachnids. So I would like for you to be able to characteristically distinguish between these two classes, you know, what do they look like in their life cycles and some examples of human diseases that are uh, transmitted through the bites of these various uh, arthropods, okay? What questions did we have? Okay, be able to discuss, you know, what we talked about here on this slide that these arthropods that we're characterizing can either be parasites themselves, which they are because they have to feed on living tissue but they also function as vectors more importantly, okay? And then how they actually uh, are parasites, all right? They're blood suckers, tissue feeders, and so forth, all right? Um, modes of transmission, and then be able to characterize or identify some of the human diseases that are associated with um, parasitic arthropods.